Hey, what's going on, guys, and welcome to another episode of Cornerstone Quick Tips. My name is Josh Donnelly, and in today's episode, we are going to take a look at how to turn any tool that uses short codes into a quasi-native integration within Cornerstone. And this is made possible using Cornerstone's new element parameters. Now, this is going to seem pretty advanced, and you can absolutely make this as advanced as you want to, but in today's video, we are going to boil things down to the basics, just scratching the surface so that you guys can see what is possible and begin using this concept in your next project. So without further ado, let's dive in. So as you can see on my screen here, we have Learn Dash installed on WordPress and we are using the Cornerstone Builder. Now we're not gonna get into the whole design here. We are just going to take a look at how we create native elements in Cornerstone. So if we were building out this course page here, we would want a start course button. And the way you would typically do this in Cornerstone traditionally is you'd grab a raw element or a text element with HTML. I'm actually gonna use a text element. Let's go ahead and do that. We'll drag that in here and we want a start course button. So we're gonna jump over to learn dash docs here and you'll notice that they have a bunch of short codes that we can tap into. And they have a whole list of those short codes right here that kind of tell you what you're getting access to. And what I want is the resume course, which can be the start course or resume course short code here. So we'll go ahead and copy that and we'll jump back over to course here. And within this text element here, we're gonna open up our content and in the HTML, we are going to paste our short code. And immediately you'll notice that that button is rendering there. Now the problem here is that's pulling through global styles from LearnDash and a lot of these you don't have control over. So what if we wanted to create a quasi native element that we could use and reuse in the future? Well, this is super simple and the sky is truly the limit. We are going to scratch the surface with something pretty simple here, but you can make this as complex as you want to. So first things first, we are going to make sure that our text element is selected here. And then we're gonna jump up to the cog and we are going to click on edit parameters. Now you've probably seen this used before where we've created parameters for components. And that's kind of what we're doing here, but we're creating a one-off that can be used individually. So we're gonna go ahead and add our curly brackets here so that we can begin adding our parameters. And now you may be looking at this and you're like, hey, I don't write code. I have no idea what I'm gonna put in here, but I promise you this is actually super simple. And if you don't know what to put in here, you can jump over to the Themeco parameter docs where Themeco has basically outlined everything that you will need to get started here. So one of the first things that we wanna do is use a color pair because we wanna change the color of the button both on base and interaction. So we're gonna go ahead and grab this pair here. We already have our opening and closing bracket, so we're just gonna choose what's inside of there. We'll jump back over here and we'll add our pair. And immediately on the left-hand side here, you're gonna notice there's a parameter tab that opened up and we now have two colors, a base and an interaction. Now those don't do anything just yet, but we are getting there. And you will notice you can choose a default base and a default alt. So let's go ahead and for our base, we're just gonna make this blue. And for our alt, we're gonna make this red. And that's just so that we can really easily see what's going on here. Now the next thing we wanna do is be able to change the resume course label. So what I'm gonna do is jump back over to that short codes area and you'll notice they have resume course as our short code. And if we jump into that short code, there's some parameters that you can use within the short code, one of them being the label. So we can show a label for this. So let's take a look at what this looks like if we were to just click on the button and jump in here. We can type LD underscore course underscore resume label equals quote start this course end quote and immediately our button over here changes to start this course so now we know we have a parameter in the short code that we can edit okay this is great so we want a text field in our parameters here so we could just write this or let's just jump back over to the parameters docs here and we'll click on control types text and we want something just kind of simple like this so again we're just going to grab the inside of the curly brackets here jump back over and we'll go ahead and paste that in. Now we're gonna see a little error here and that's because we need to add a comma. So now we have a button label, it's a text field and it's initial or it's default is click me. And then we could specify a placeholder. I don't even think we need that. So I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of that one there. And there we have it. Now, none of this is wired up and none of this is controlling anything yet. But if I jump over to my parameters here, you'll notice the button label click me. But when I type something in here, like click me now, exclamation point, that doesn't change anything. Now we get to wire up our parameters that we've created 
to this element and to the short code. So let's focus on this button label. We want this button label to apply to our short code. Well, that one's super easy. We're gonna jump into our primary here, go into our content, and right here where it says start this course, we wanna fill that with dynamic content. That dynamic content is gonna be double curlies, DC, colon, param for parameters, colon, and then the name of our parameter, which is whatever we called this here, so button label. And that can be whatever you typed in there, but we'll do button label. We'll add that in here, and then we'll end our double curlies. Now, if you don't know what to type in there for the parameters, you can also come down to dynamic content, type in param, and scroll down here, and you'll have element parameters, and the only thing you need to enter in is that button label name of your parameter field, and add that in, and it'll create the dynamic content for you right here. So with that done, that is now wired up. What does that mean? Well, you'll notice right over here, this now says, click me now. If I open up the params here, and I type in start, course exclamation point you'll notice it's immediately changing on the right hand side over here so that's great but now we want to change the background color of the button and this is where things get really cool if you know a little bit of css we can jump into the customize tab of our element here and we're going to go into element css and we're going to keep things really simple here you could change the shape of the button and all of that with css but we're going to focus just on the colors we're going to do a dollar sign el because as you'll see here, use EL in the editor to target this specific element. So we're gonna do that. So we'll do dollar sign EL. Then we wanna grab this button here in its base state and its hover state. And so we could inspect this element on the front end. So we could go ahead and save this, jump over here and get our classes on this button. So we'll right click, inspect. And here I can now see the classes that we have associated with this. And so right here, you'll notice that we have two classes here assigned to this. We have learn dash wrapper and LD button. I'm just going to go ahead and copy both of those here. We'll jump back into cornerstone and we'll add those here. So now we're targeting this specific element. So if I have two of these on the page, it's only applying to this one. And then I have learn dash wrapper and LD button. Now we'll go ahead and add a curly bracket. And this is just simple CSS. We're going to say background color. And for the sake of example, I'm going to say black and semicolon. And you'll notice it's immediately working. But we don't want this to be black. We want this to be a dynamic value. So yet again, we're going to type in our curly curly DC param. And then we want this to target our text color. So we'll go ahead and put in that text color parameter, but there are two text colors. There is a base and an alt. And so we're going to do period base and curly. Now we see that blue that we had selected there. Now we also want to set our hover color here. And so for our hover color, we're going to use the same exact thing. We're just going to paste this down here, but instead of LD button, we're going to make this colon hover. And instead of base, we're going to make this alt. And that's all based on just what we have in here. So we have base and alt. And so those are what we're targeting in our text color parameter. Now, keep in mind, this could be whatever you want. This was just copied straight from the docs, but this could say button color. But if we do change this here, we need to make sure it's changed everywhere because now we are referencing that in our CSS. So what does this mean now? You'll notice that if I jump back over to my params, I'm now building out a native element here. So I could come in here and I could change my base color to pink and that's working. And I could change my interaction color to green. And now when I hover on this, it's working. Now we're only tapping into that background color and the button label, but you can start to see how this is really coming together. And you could take this even further, being able to edit the border radius, being able to edit the text inside of this button, and you would just continue adding parameters and making sure those parameters are wired up to either native features here or custom CSS here, which is awesome. Now you could take this a step further and save this element, and we'll go ahead and save this, and we're gonna call this learn dash primary button and save and now i can jump over in the future to my elements pane here grab my learn dash primary button drag that out here and now i can style this one separately so i could give it blue and blue and now i have two different buttons that easy one could say resume lesson and one could say start course so they are both individually styled but connected to that learn dash short code. Now again, this is only scratching the surface of what is possible, but hopefully this video has shown you how you can create native elements with non-native 
tools. As always, I hope you guys find these tutorials useful, and I will see you guys in the next video. Happy building!